This is the 16th lecture on DSP and our topic today is all pass filters. We had already started the discussion last time. We will also introduce what are comb filters and then discuss in details linear phase FIR filters. On the last occasion, 15th lecture, we had discussed simple FIR filters and we discussed low pass, high pass, band pass and band stop filters. And we said that for FIR, the all pass filter is a trivial filter. In other words, it is a simple delay. You cannot have a polynomial in Z inverse whose magnitude will be equal to 1. You cannot have. This is the only trivial all pass FIR filter. Then we talked about IIR, simple IIR digital filters and we showed how to construct first order low pass, high pass. We normalized the magnitude, maximum magnitude to 1. That is why you required a multiplying constant 1 plus alpha by 2 or 1 minus alpha by 2. Then we introduced the band pass filter. Once again, the magnitude, maximum magnitude was normalized to unity and band pass filter was designed in terms of two parameters, alpha and beta, where beta controls the center frequency and alpha controls the bandwidth. Similarly, for a band stop filter, beta controls the notch frequency omega 0 and alpha control the bandwidth. This time also it is the 3 dB bandwidth, but 3 dB below the maximum magnitude. There is a difference between bandwidth definition for band stop filters and low pass, high pass, band pass filters. In all these three cases, the 3 dB bandwidth is 3 dB below the maximum magnitude. Here also it is 3 dB below the maximum magnitude which was normalized to unity. In the case of all pass filters, we discussed several properties of all pass filters and the simplest all pass filter is of course the first order where the denominator because it is IIR, the transfer function shall be a rational function and in the first order filter, if we take the denominator as 1 plus d 1 z inverse, then the numerator is simply the same polynomial with coefficients in reverse order that is d 1 plus z inverse. Similarly, if I have a second order filter 1 plus d 1 z inverse plus d 2 z to the minus 2, then the numerator shall be d 2 plus d 1 z inverse plus z to the minus 2. 1 d 1 d 2, so it becomes d 2 d 1 1. Okay? And we also showed that in general a and z, nth order all pass filter, if the denominator is d n of z, then the numerator can be simply written as z to the minus n d n of z inverse. This is the general property. Okay? Obviously, this will give you, this is written in such a form that the magnitude is normalized to unity. A n z inverse is equal to 1. Magnitude is normalized to unity. One question that was asked by one of the students was, where do you apply all pass filters? If their magnitude is 1, I have a problem in this paper, but does not matter. Where do you apply them? We apply them in delay equalization, delay equalization. I have repeatedly told you that if a transmission channel, it could be a transmission system or a channel 
has non-linear phase. If the phase does not vary linearly with frequency, then we have a problem of delay distortion. That is a group of frequencies start together. If they do not reach together, then there shall be distortion in the, tra in the received signal and this distortion is called delay distortion. Now, in practice, linear phase is possible only with finite impulse response systems. With analog systems, it is not possible at all. In digital systems, FIR, it is possible to design with exact linear phase or constant group delay. So, if we have a channel, for example, a transmission channel, okay, which has a dispersive property. In other words, the group delay is not a constant. If the group delay, let us say, with frequency, if it falls like this, the channel delay, then at the receiving end, we can have a filter, an all pass filter, so that the magnitude is not changed. The magnitude, relative magnitude of all the component frequencies remains the same, but the phase is so designed that the group delay of the all pass filters rises like this in an inverse fashion. Then from the transmitter to the receiver, the receiver is here, from the transmitter T x to the receiver, the group delay shall be a constant because the group delay is simply overall group delay is the addition of the group delays by the channel and the all pass filter. So, delay equalization is the most important application of all pass filters, but as we go through the course you will see that all pass filters have many other applications. In fact, if you can design an all pass filter you can design any other kind of filter by appropriate combination of all pass filters. We shall see how to design low pass, high pass, band pass, band stop and multi band pass, multi band stop and all other kinds of filters. Uh, <clears throat> some properties of all pass filters require a definition of what is called a bounded real function, a bounded real function. A function h of z is said to be bounded real, h of z is b r if magnitude of h of e to the j omega is less than or equal to 1. That is, if the transfer function magnitude does not exceed 1. We have used all our filters such that the magnitude is normalized to unity. In other words, all of the transfer functions that we have derived or discussed so far are bounded real. Now, bounded real also has an interpretation in terms of energy. You see, we can always write if the magnitude is bounded by unity, the square of the magnitude is also bounded by unity. Now, what is capital H of e to the j omega? It is the spectrum, the Fourier transform of the output divided by the Fourier transform of the input. So, this ensures that y of e to the j omega magnitude squared is less than equal to capital X of e to the j omega magnitude squared. And by linearity, by linearity, if we take, uh, if we integrate this from minus pi to pi, then the right hand side should also be integrated from minus pi to pi and we take 1 over 2 pi, 1 over 2 pi. Then the left hand side by Percival's theorem is simply the energy of the input, energy of the output signal, right, by Percival's theorem. Therefore, it follows 
that it is summation x square n that is the output energy is less than the less than or equal to the input energy. In other words, bounded real functions are passive. Bounded real functions are passive. Now, if the inequality is satisfied with equality sign, then we say the system is lossless. And therefore, we make this statement that APFs as designed by us, that is of the form dnz, z to the minus n, dn z inverse, okay, are lossless bounded real functions, bounded real functions. They are passive, not only passive, passivity is taken to the limit, they are lossless, they do not absorb any energy, okay. The other property of APFs, all pass filters, if that if Z0 is a pole, if Z0 is a pole, then dn Z0 should be equal to 0, right. Therefore, dn Z inverse would be equal to 0 when z is equal to 1 by z0. Agreed? Now, what is the denominator? Denominator is z to the minus n d n z inverse. So, the zeros of the function shall be those values of z at which d n z inverse is equal to 0. In other words, the poles and zeros of all pass functions occur in reciprocal pairs, poles and zeros of APFs occur in reciprocal pairs. It is a very important property because it says that since the APF is to be stable the magnitude cannot be bounded unless it is stable. Therefore, all poles must be inside the unit circle. All poles must be inside the unit circle. Okay? Naturally, the zeros must all be outside the unit circle. And such functions, I shall only define them, I will not go into the interpretation. Such functions whose zeros, all of whose zeros are outside the unit circle are called maximum phase functions, maximum phase functions. And by logic it follows that all functions whose zeros are inside the unit circle shall be called minimum phase functions. And if a function has zeros inside as well as outside, they are neither minimum nor maximum. They are mixed phase functions. The physical interpretation is that if you have a zero, let us say somewhere inside the unit circle and a zero somewhere outside the unit circle at a reciprocal location then the magnitudes of the corresponding factors are equal. But the phase shift provided by the zero outside the unit circle is greater than provided by the zero inside the unit circle. That is the interpretation. We shall not, we shall not go into the details of derivation and other things. It suffices to remember that if zeros are inside the unit circle, all zeros, then it is minimum phase. If zeros are, all zeros are outside, there is maximum phase. These are terminologies. We shall not make much use of them and therefore, we will not go into the details of this. The other property which requires proof and it is cited as a problem in Mitra. If you cannot do it, then I shall do it in the class 
but the property is that the magnitude of a z now z is a general complex variable that is r e to the power j phi is less than equal to or greater than 1 for mod z obviously the middle term should be equal agreed mod a z is equal to 1 for mod z equal to 1 and the other two signs are reversed that is mod z greater than 1 outside the unit circle mod a z is bounded is is greater than unity I beg your pardon outside the unit circle mod a z is less than 1 inside the unit circle mod a z greater than one. this is a property which has to be proved it is not obvious it has to be proved try to prove this if you cannot do it then I shall do it in one class that is about all pass we shall come back to all pass again and again and we shall require these properties and therefore make all pass a an integral part of your DSP education it plays a very important role today uh, since the properties and applications of all pass were detailed in the 90s they have become extremely important today and no digital filter designer can uh, can uh, afford to ignore any of these properties you shall be able to do intelligent design of digital signal processors if you if you remember these properties of all pass filters the other filter that I shall make a quick mention is comb filters and the name is derived from the property that the frequency response looks like a comb it has it has gaps and solid lines gaps and solid lines it looks like a comb the lines are not straight lines they are frequency responses you know straight line response is abhorred by nature nature does not allow such things they are not realizable okay I shall take a very simple case but the definition is that if you have an H of Z which has one pass band or one stop band or one pass band and one stop band all right then if we if we replace each delay by capital L number of delays that is in H of Z if we replace Z by Z to the L then we get what is known as a comb filter G of Z is a comb filter which is derived from a simple filter a digital filter with each delay replaced by z to the power capital L capital L of course is an integer I shall take only one example h of z equal to 1 let us say half 1 plus z inverse what is this filter it is a low pass filter or high pass low pass because when z is 1 it is 1 when z is minus 1 it is 0 you must remember how to test very quickly what kind of a filter it is now if I replace z by z to the L then I get g of z as equal to half 1 plus z to the minus L and if I write the frequency response of this function g of z is equal to half 1 plus z to the minus l the frequency response g of e to the j omega shall be e to the power minus j omega l by 2 sine or cosine it will be cosine because there is a plus sign cosine of omega l by 2 this is very easy to do okay and therefore magnitude z of g of e to the j omega shall be equal to 1 
when magnitude of cosine of omega l by 2 is equal to 1. Agreed? And that occurs when omega l by 2 is equal to a multiple of pi. Okay? Let us say r pi. Now, since it is l, our r should go from 0 to l minus 1. It is a periodic function. Okay. How many times shall it be equal to 1 in one period? That is 0 to twice pi or minus pi to plus pi. <coughs> Obviously, these frequencies are twice r pi divided by L. Okay. For example, if, if L is equal to 5, let us say, all right then our frequency response if we plot from 0 to 2 pi over one complete period then the frequency response it is a low pass filter. So, it starts from 1 all right it comes to 0 then in between 0 to 2 pi there shall be 5 frequencies 0 r equal to 0 to 4 that means total of 5. <coughs> five frequencies at which the magnitude will be one. So, it will look like this. <coughs> what will be this frequency? 2 pi by 5. This is r equal to 0, this is r equal to 1. So, we shall have uh, 4 pi by 5. Okay, the next one will go like this, 4 pi by 5. The next one would be 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, next one would be? Why is it 4 pi by 5? Why is it 4? <laughs> this is r equal to 0, r equal to 1, r equal to 2. So, 2 pi multiplied by 2 is 4 pi. Okay? No 3 pi by 5, not. Okay. So, this will be 6 pi by 5. Agreed. And then we shall have 8 pi by 5. Okay. My 2 pi has to be shifted. My scale is not okay. 8 pi by 5. The next one, no, it is okay. Next one would be here. Have I made 5? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is right. Does not it look like a comb? That is why it is called a comb filter. Now, a comb filter. Where is it used? Why do we require such a peculiar uh, frequency response? As I told you, one of the one of the applications, one simple application is there are many others. <coughs> if you have, let's say, 50 hertz in a biomedical application where the signal is very weak, and 50 hertz pickup is there, the 50 hertz will drown the desired signal and you want to get rid of 50 hertz. So, what you do is you design a comb filter whose, whose first rejection is at 50, next one is at 100, 150. So, it gets rid of not only 50 hertz and 50 hertz is hardly 50 hertz. It is an impure waveform. So, it gets rid of all its, all its harmonics also and then what you get at the output is a, is a signal devoid of 50 hertz. All right. This is one of the, uh, that is the, the, the application is elimination of periodic distorted interferences. All right. This is one of the uh, <coughs> applications. There are other applications. You can design uh, such a filter starting from FIR high pass filters. For example, half 1 minus z to the minus 1. Is that right? High pass filter, the most elementary FIR high pass filter, half 1 minus z inverse. You can, <coughs> you can re replace z by z to the L. The only difference would be the first rejection will be that at DC. Where would you use it? You would use it where DC 
as well as some other periodic interference is important. If you want to get rid of DC, DC as you know it raises the waveform to a constant value. If you want to get rid of it, this is the high pass version shall be used. But the uh, picture, the shape of the waveform, shape of the frequency response shall be comb like, all right. There will be maxima and minima. Similarly, for a band stop filter, how many pass bands does a band stop filter have? Pass band, two pass band, but it has only one stop band. Therefore, you can make a comb filter out of that. That will also look like a multiple band stop filter. Similarly, you can make a comb filter from a band pass filter. There are two stop bands, but one pass band. You cannot make a comb filter from a multiple pass band or multiple stop band filter because it becomes a mess. It is very difficult to derive to design a filter for given rejections and given acceptance. They interfere with each other and it becomes a mess. <clears throat> we next talk of first zero phase filters. Zero phase filters that is <coughs> the frequency response shall be a real function. Okay. <coughs> One of the examples, well, zero phase filter obviously you require an FIR. Okay. One of the examples that we did once upon a time was alpha, beta, alpha. H of n is equal to alpha, beta, alpha, where this is n equal to zero. And if you recall, the frequency response is very easy to design, it's very easy to derive. Frequency response will be beta plus 2 alpha cosine of omega, all right, alpha e to the j omega plus beta plus alpha e to the minus j omega. This is a real quantity, but the phase is not zero necessarily. The phase of this will be zero plus a quantity which could be zero or pi or twice pi or three pi or whatever it is. Conventionally, such filters are called zero phase filters, although the phase may not be zero for the total frequency range. Phase may be zero or pi or two pi and so on and so forth. But historically, it has gone in the literature. Such filters are called zero phase filters. Obviously, zero phase filters are non causal, that is, H of n is not 0 for n less than 0. In order to make a real frequency response, you require h of n to the right and also h of n to the left, all right. So, zero phase filters are not real time filters. However, a zero phase filter can be made causal by multiplying by z to the power minus n. For example, here the transfer function will be alpha z plus beta plus alpha z inverse. Okay, This is my h of z and I can make it realizable by simply multiplying by z inverse. Then the non-causal filter becomes causal. In other words, physically what I am doing is h of n exists on the right side and left side. So, I push from the left side so that the last sample coincides with 0. I simply multiply by that number of delays. So, some uh, designers, filter designers prefer to keep phase out of the picture in designing the filter and then add the required number of delays. So, zero phase filters if you get the term do not be surprised. It, it means that it is a, a contraption for designing the filter, ultimately when you realize it in real time, you shall have to make the appropriate number of delays. What is important in practice is to be able to design linear phase filters. And obviously, 
I have repeatedly told you that exact linear phase <coughs> is achievable only by FIR digital <coughs> filters. So these are FIR filters. Linear phase cannot be obtained by analog filters, cannot be obtained by IIR filters. They can only be approximated, whereas exact linear phase can be derived only from FIR filters. And this is why, this is why FIR filters are so important. In general, what you can do by a second order IIR filter, you will require a very large length if you want to have the same performance from an FIR filter. Second order may require 200th order FIR, very costly. But if exact linear phase or no delay distortion is a precise requirement, you have no other alternative. And we shall show that linear phase FIR filter must obey symmetry or anti-symmetry of impulse response. That is H of n must be equal to H of n minus n plus minus for linear phase. The impulse response must be symmetrical or anti-symmetrical in order to achieve linear phase. We shall show this uh, in a little while. The length of the filter if I have samples from small n equal to 0 to capital N, then obviously the length of the filter is capital N plus 1. Okay? Now, obviously we can have the impulse response can, can have symmetry or anti-symmetry. H of n and the length capital N plus 1 can be either odd or even and therefore four possible cases arise. That is H of N is symmetrical odd length, H of N is symmetrical even length, H of N is anti-symmetrical, anti-symmetry when the sign here is minus, all right. Anti-symmetrical odd and anti-symmetrical even, four cases arise. And these are usually designated as types 1, 2, 3 and 4 FIR linear phase filters. Let us consider type 1, H of n shall be equal to H of n minus n symmetrical and capital N would be capital N plus 1 is odd, length is odd, therefore capital N is even. Okay. To, to focus, uh, to concretize our, our concept, let us consider a simple example. Let us say capital N equal to 8. Now look at this, look at this symmetry. Small n starts from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The length is 9. What we require is that h of 0 should be equal to h of 8. Agreed? Symmetry means this h of 0 should be equal to h of 8. These two will couple. h1 should be equal to h7. h2 to h6. h3 to h5. And the fourth sample is a loner h4. It does not have a pair. Okay? The symmetry is therefore around capital N by 2th sample. Capital N is even, so capital N by 2th sample. And if we write the transfer function, our transfer function would be H of Z equal to H naught plus H1 Z inverse plus H2 Z to the minus 2 plus h3 z to the minus 3 plus h4 I am writing h of n as h subscript n. They are identical. Okay? I just do not want to write these brackets again and again. So, I made this h4 z to the minus 4. Then h5 is the same as h3. 
So I write here H3 z to the minus 5. H6 is the same as H2, so I write here H2 z to the minus 6. H7 is the same as H1, so I write H1 z to the minus 7. And H8 is the same as H0, so I write H0 z to the minus 7. This is the transfer function. And if I, if I write this by combining terms, you see there are only 4 multipliers. Because of symmetry, 8 multipliers have been reduced to 4. The first term would be H0, 1 plus z to the minus 8 plus H1, z inverse plus z to the minus 7 plus <coughs> H2, z to the minus 2 plus z to the minus 6 plus H3, z to the minus 3 plus z to the minus 5 plus H4, z to the minus 4. Okay. If I take z to the minus 4 out, then h4 shall be left with no power of z. Agreed? So I do that. I write h of z as equal to z to the minus 4. What shall I get here? h0, z to the 4 plus z to the minus 4 plus h1, I shall get z to the minus 3 plus z to the no it will be z to the plus 3 and z to the minus 3 plus h2 I shall get z to the 2 plus z to the minus 2 plus h1 z plus z inverse plus h4 this is what I shall get agreed and if I now find the frequency response h of e to the j omega, this is h3. Thank you. h0, h1, h2, h3. Yes. So if I write the frequency response, I shall get e to the minus j omega times 4, then twice h0 cosine of 4 omega. Agree? Plus twice h1 cosine of 3 omega plus twice h2 cosine of 2 omega plus twice h3 cosine of omega plus h4. All right? You can see that the, the quantity h of e to the g omega is e to the minus j omega 4, j 4 omega, which says that the phase is minus 4 omega plus a constant, which can be 0, pi, 2 pi or 3 pi, depending on the sign of this real quantity. Therefore, in general, we can write h of e to the j omega as equal to e to the minus j 4 omega multiplied by some new symbol h tilde of omega <coughs> where h tilde of omega is real and since it poses real many a times is confused with magnitude this term is given the name pseudo magnitude it is not magnitude because it can also have a phase it is called pseudo magnitude. Now, if instead of 4, well, before you go there, you see the phase is equal to minus 4 omega plus some quantity beta, where beta can be 0, pi, 2 pi, multiples of pi. You see that the group delay tau sub g of omega, which is minus d phi d omega, is simply equal to 4. So, four samples of delay suffered by all frequencies passing through the filter. However, there is something, there is something fishy about it. I have concealed something. 
wherever there is a phase transition, you cannot differentiate, right? There will be a delta function there. So, this four samples of delay is in the piecewise linear regions of the phase. Is it clear? Okay. Wherever there is a phase change, let us say phase was falling like this, then you get a jump. At this jump, obviously, you cannot differentiate it. There will be delta function and infinite. All right. So, the, so the group delay is applicable for these linear regions only, not at the frequency at which the pseudo magnitude changes sign from positive to negative or negative to positive. In general, if the length of the filter is n plus 1 and it is odd and h of n equal to h of n minus n, that is a type 1 filter, the function h of z shall be of the form z to the power minus n by 2, then h 1 of z let us say, where h of e to the j omega, the frequency response will be e to the minus j omega n by 2, the delay shall be n by 2 samples. Then we have called it h of omega and h of omega shall be of the form, what will be the form? There will be a constant term h of n by 2 and then plus twice summation, yes? n equal to 1 to n by 2 minus 1. Why is it n by 2 minus 1? <laughs> no, we had cosine 4 omega, if you remember. That is what I wanted to. Didn't we have a 4 omega here? We had a 4 omega twice h0 cosine 4 omega. Therefore, it should go right up to n by 2. Yes. Okay. So, it is n by 2. And uh, h of, how do we write it? n by 2 minus n, if you want to write cosine of n omega. When small n equal to 4, the subscript is h of 0. So, this is the general formula, okay? And you must remember this is pseudo magnitude, it is not the magnitude. The other interesting features of this function is that you can write, once again, let us take an example. Let us take uh, H0 plus H1 Z inverse plus h naught z to the minus 2. What is the length? 3. So, the length is odd. Is it a type 1 filter? Yes, because it is symmetrical and the length is odd. Okay. Suppose this is h of z. Now, can I not write this as z to the minus 1 h of No, z to the minus 2 h of z inverse. Can I? What is h of z inverse? It is h naught plus h 1 z plus h naught z squared. Then you multiply the whole thing by z to the minus 2. You get, we get back what we, what we wanted. In general, for type 1 filters, h n of z is equal to z to the minus n. This n, capital N, is not the order. I am sorry. It is the order. It is not the length of the filter. Length of the filter is capital N plus 1. Do not confuse between the two. This is z to the minus n, h n of z inverse. 
capital N for type 1 filter is even. All right? Is the point clear? Yes or no? Okay. What is H n of 1? If you put Z equal to 1. What is H n of 1? On the right hand side? Same H n of 1. What is H n of minus 1? If Z is changed to minus 1. Same H n of minus 1. These are trivial things, but you will see that they have an important effect in the other types of filters. Okay? Hn of 1 is Hn of 1, Hn of minus 1 is Hn of minus 1. All right. The other important property is that the zeros, if Z equal to Z0 is a zero of Hn, then 1 by Z0 must also be a zero. Isn't that right? If Hn of Z0, let me use a different our relation is z to the minus n h of z inverse or oh, we should add an n if h n of z 0 is equal to 0 then obviously h n of 1 by z 0 must also be a 0 because the two are identical if we put h and z0 here, then we must put z0, z0 here also. And if it is identically equal to 0, then obviously h n of 1 by z0 is also a 0. That is, we derive that if z0 is a 0 of h z, then so is, so is 1 by z0. In other words, the zeros occur in reciprocal pairs. In all pass filters, the zeros and poles occurred in reciprocal pairs. Where are the poles of an FIR filter? All of them are at the, where are the poles of an FIR filter? All of them are at the origin, z equal to 0. It is only the zeros that we are concerned with. And therefore, the zeros occur in reciprocal pairs. And H n of z in general for an FIR filter, H n of z is a polynomial for an FIR filter, a polynomial whose zeros obey this relationship that they occur in reciprocal pairs are called mirror image polynomials mirror image polynomials. What kind of a mirror is it? If Z0 after reflection gets to 1 by Z0, what kind of a mirror is it? Obviously not a plane mirror. If it is a plane mirror, then the distances should have been equal, right? So it is a convex mirror, right? When you look from inside the unit circle, it is a convex or concave. You are inside the unit circle. This is the mirror. If there is a zero here, this zero should have a couple here, should have a mate here. What kind of a mirror is this? It's concave. Concave. Okay. So mirror image, mirror is a concave mirror, it is not a plane mirror. All right. Now let us consider type 2. You will see very interesting feature. Type 2 is symmetry that is h of n is equal to h of n minus n. n plus 1 length is even. That is capital N is odd. Capital N is odd. Let us consider a typical example. Let n be equal to 7. Capital N is odd. Now look at this symmetry. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now our symmetry shall be like this. 
H n, H n minus n, 0 and 7, 1 and 6, 2 and 5, 3 and 4. All of them have mates, okay? All of them have paired. So the symmetry is around n by 2 where a sample does not exist. Agreed? It is around 3.5 here where a sample does not exist. And this gives it some special properties. If I write h of z, I shall have h naught 1 plus z to the minus 7, agreed? Plus h 1 z inverse plus z to the minus 6 plus h 2 z to the minus 2 plus z to the minus 5, 2 and 5 are pairs and then h 3 z to the minus 3 plus z to the minus 4. And what I can take out now is z to the minus 7 by 2, all right, z to the minus 7 by 2, that is 3.5. Then what do I get? H naught z to the plus 7 by 2 plus z to the minus 7 by 2, all right, plus etc. You can fill up the terms. The last term would be H3 z to the, yes, I have taken minus 3.5, so it will be z to the half plus z to the minus, minus half, agreed. And if I take the frequency response, capital H of e to the j omega, then I shall get e to the minus j 7 omega by 2 multiplied by twice H naught cosine of 7 omega by 2 plus twice H 1 cosine of 5 omega by 2 and so on plus twice H 3 cosine of omega by 2. What is the group delay now? 3.5 samples. Group delay is simply 7 by 2, not an integer number. It is 3 samples plus another half sample. This creates problems in realization because we cannot realize a half sample, right? In DSP with uniform sampling, our time index is an integer, but this does produce a delay of 3 and a half samples. And in general, in general, if we take h of n equal to h of n minus n and n plus 1 equal to even, that is capital N is odd, then capital H of e to the j omega is of the form e to the minus j omega n by 2, then it would be twice summation h of, let us see if we can fill this up, cosine of, cosine of, let us write this as n minus half omega. Okay, cosine of n minus half omega. Then what should be the subscript here? n plus 1 by 2 minus n. Let us see if we can match it. When n equal to 0, well, what should be the limits? How many terms do we have? We do not have n equal to 0. We have n equal to 1, 1 minus half. Okay. So, 1, 2, n plus 1 by 2, that is correct. You must be careful in writing this form because each type has a different form. All right. Now, you can also, it is also clear that the same relationship holds here also, that is z to the minus n h of z inverse. Isn't that right? 
same relationship holds as in the previous case type 1 but there is a difference now if you put h of 1 it is equal to capital N is odd now but 1 to the power minus an odd number is again 1 so you get h of 1 but h of minus 1 now becomes minus h of minus 1 which means that h of minus 1 must be equal to 0. zero. What does this mean? It means that h of z if it is to be 0 at z equal to minus 1 then it must have a factor 1 minus z inverse isn't that right? Multiplied by some h1 of z. In other words with type 2 is it possible to get a high pass filter? h of minus 1 is identically equal to 0 and therefore hpf not possible. Is the point clear? With type 1 it was not a problem. h of 1 was equal to h of 1, h of minus 1 was equal to h of minus 1. But here h of minus 1 is identically equal to 0 because capital N is odd. Therefore, type 2 filter has the limitation that it cannot realize, it cannot be used for design of a high pass filter. This restriction is not there in type 1 filter. We shall see tomorrow that for type 3 you can neither get a low pass nor a high pass. It can only be used for band pass and band stuff. And type 4 is the is the other end or the mirror image of type 2 that is in type 4 LPF is not possible. Okay? We will continue tomorrow.